Hey everyone, Josephine here and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share an actual book review with you for the book The Thousand Deaths of Art of Ben. <laughs> Say that three times fast. From the Kingdom of Grit series. This is book one in the series and I've read that just recently in June. And the reason why I want to talk with you about the book because I want you to help me make a decision. Should I continue reading the series or not? So let's talk a little bit about it. The Thousand Deaths of Arter Ben is about Arter Ben, who is the main character, and his colleague Rake or Rake. I'm sorry, you know, I, I always have that German touch when it comes to pronouncing names, so for me it's Rake, that are essentially thieves, but more elaborate. So they are very creative in the way they steal stuff from other people. And the book starts out with a really quick and fast paced heist because they basically just stole really valuable stuff from someone and now they're running away from the guard, they're run running away from that guy and you get to know a little bit how Ardorben and Rake kind of work and think and it was super fun. You also get to know in that first chapter how the magic system works which is really interesting so I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then yeah, you get to know the two main characters, essentially. And I loved the fast-paced way how this book started. It really got you excited and all hyped up about, oh, this is going to be a great story. A little bit later in the book, you get to meet Quara. She it becomes the new associate of Ardor and Rake because they get hired by a holy isle, which is something like a priest, from what I understand, to steal the king's crown. And Arter was first a little bit hesitant to take that deal, but the more he heard about it, he was like, you know what, this is going to be the biggest job in my life and it's so crazy and I have to come up with such an elaborate game to get this done that it just has to work and it's so cool and I want to do that. And the convenient part for them is that the Isle has a lot of money to give them so they can basically buy anything and get anything situated to get that heist going. And the Isle hires them to steal the king's crown, but because the palace is guarded really well, they kind of just march in there, seal it and go out. They basically come up with an idea of how to trick the king to get close to that person and then steal it somehow that way. So they hire some sort of thief actors that help them getting into a new role and that help them with costumes and stuff like that. And basically the first or the majority of the f first part of the book, maybe the first half, maybe the first two third is about that particular heist. The world itself, and I'm showing you a picture of the map in the front. If you played a particular video game, you might recognize that one, but I'm showing you this. When I showed it to my husband, he was like, oh, is this World of Warcraft? <laughs> and that was kind of the same, same thing that I said um, when I saw that map. I thought it was, oh, it looks pretty much like World of Warcraft, which is fine. I like World of Warcraft, so I don't mind that at all. But the world is set on a bunch of islands. There's an island in the middle where dragon live. And those dragon arm, dragons are important for the magic system. And then you have islands around it where all the people live. So in the dragons that live in the middle isle are beasts so they're not nice or anything they eat a human if they walk by and if they're not careful so you have to be really careful with them but they cannot leave that island it looks like they are basically stuck there and the way they are part of the magic system is if they eat something and it goes through their digestive tract and they poop it out that stuff then can be put into something that you can use for magic <laughs> That was the weirdest explanation for how their stuff works. But by uh, it going through the di digestive tract and the dragon actually sets it on fire too of some sort, basically you can then collect a stone or it, it's something really heavy and solid. So you're not actually collecting dragon poop, but it's something heavy and solid that then goes through a factory and stuff like that. And then you can conjure light with it. You can heal people with it. And it's essentially a powder form, if I understand that correctly, that then can be used for various different things. And you can combine them with things. You can prolong the effect of the powder. So he really built a really nice big idea of that magic system. And I really liked how he put that together and how it grew over the time of the book. What I also liked about the book is essentially they're 
two islands and you have one sort of people living on one island and another sort of people living on the other island. And one of the things that he includes in his story is culture or discovering how to, those two different cultures of these islands basically work together and what struggles there are in a world when you start mixing those cultures that have been separate for a long time. So that king is known for opening up the borders, if you will, so people can live together and live on both sides. I really liked how he wove that into the story and how he talked about those difficulties that you have when it comes to different cultures, especially because it's rather new. So it's not like a for hundreds of years, this is what has been happening already. It's really he essentially just did it and brought in this other world into his and started, you know, having them mingle. So I really liked how he discovered that and how he included that into the overall world. And it's actually really important because some of the story arcs or some of the storylines in the book are, or th th the fact that they are two different cultures is relevant to those storylines. So it is really interesting how he wove that in and how he connected the dots on some of those areas. All right, let's get to the things that I didn't like as much. So first of all, Quara, the girl that they hire for their elaborate heist to steal the regalia is in constant self-doubt. She is described as a thief that is really great and really knows her stuff and constantly steal, steals things that are difficult for others to steal and that she does things no one else would do. But she is in constant self-doubt. And then after a while later, after she has been part of that team for a while longer, that doubt changes to, I have been self-sufficient for such a long time, but now I'm relying on this group so much. What happens when everything this is over, then I have to go back to myself. Can I even still do that? That was a bit annoying. So she really had those annoying traits of, oh, I'm not good. I'm not great. But everybody knew she was. She was just the one not seeing it. And that's one of those tropes that I have a hard time with because, you know, I'm one of those people who just get over with, with. I mean, put your big girl panties on and move on. So that was one of the little bit annoying pieces. And then another part that didn't sit very well with me is that something happens around halfway through the book that essentially makes the first half of the book obsolete. And I was just sitting there like, so why did I read those three, 350 pages? If you know, if this is what happens. I don't want to spoil anything, obviously. But that was a little bit weird. And I thought, you know, that could have been handled better. Or things could have been shortened then if if he already knew that this is what would happen. He could have shortened the beginning to maybe 100 pages or 150 rather than going through 350 pages. That is a couple of days of reading for me just to realize... Okay, so that was all for nothing. Yeah, that that were kind of the negative parts. So positive, definitely the character of Artoban and Rake. I really love those two. It's an amazing duo, bromance, however you want to call it. It's a great friendship. And I love how those two interact with each other and how their differences really align well with each other and how they respect each other. Arterban is super witty and I love his humor. I think he's a, a really well-developed character. I love the world and the magic system. I think it's so creative to do something with dragon poop. <laughs> and I loved how Tyla Whitesides really thought through how those different powders that come out of the dragon or that are produced from that dragon stone, essentially, dragon poop stone, hmm. how those powders interact with each other and how you can mix them. So it has kind of like a sciency flair to it without going into any science world. So it's really interesting. I like the religion and the culture in there. I really like that world building. I like the heist and the fun part. So it had really some nice moments. And I think after I read through the entire story, so there's a lot of stuff happening. You know, you think it's just a heist at the beginning, but then you learn some things that open up the world and really grow the story that I'm actually kind of interested in how it would continue. I hope you can see how I'm struggling between is it good? Is it not good? Should I continue? Should I not? So if you've read The Kingdom of Grid, The Thousand Death of Ardaban, and also book two and three, like The Shattered Realm of Ardaban, and The Last Lies of Ardaban, let me know if it would be worth it. I already know. So book one ended not on a cliffhanger. I'm, I know that there's still stuff that needs to happen, but it is a good ending. I could leave it there and would be fine with it. I know book two has a cliffhanger ending. So if I read book two, I very likely have to read book three. So that is kind of, you know, my thought process here. And yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. What do you think? 
should I should I do that? Should I continue reading or not? Um, because in, I had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, I think it's a great book. I definitely recommend it. I, I'd say read the first book first to see, maybe it doesn't bug you, maybe it's just me, you know? Maybe you say, no, that's fine. I think that was a great way of how he put the story and you want to continue reading the story. Because I think, again, the world, the characters, the magic system is definitely worth exploring. And it's very different from other things that I've read in the genre. So let me know below your thoughts. Tell me what you think. Have you read it? Have you not read it? Would you be interested in reading it if you haven't? And if you've read it, do you think it would be worth for me <laughs> moving forward? I have book two years, so I could even start immediately with book two. I would just have to get book three somehow. Let me know in the comment box, and then I hope I'll see you soon with my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!